So today I'm going to talk about Kakofal element geochemistry of arc-related submarine lavas. There are actually various factors controlling um, the formation of SMS deposits, which include hydrothermal um, processes such as base separation, secondary remobilization. But recently there has been an increase, increasing interest in the um, role of metal concentrations, calcophile metal concentrations in magmas in the formation of magmatic hydrothermal deposits. Today's talk discusses magmatic perspective on the SMS deposit. This talk um, mainly consists of two segments. In the first part, I will show the calcophile element variations of two representative submarine lavas in arc-related settings during magma differentiation in order to discuss how they behave and which host minerals control um, their behavior, which, um, and um, finally, if PGEs can be used as a proxy for copper and gold in a magma. And in the second part, um, I will uh, discuss the implications for the magmatic hydrothermal deposits, including porphyry and as the SMS deposits, uh, by showing that by showing that depending on timing of sulfide saturation, how uh, the ore type can be, um, can be buried. Let me briefly introduce what SMS deposits are. The SMS deposits originate at hot bands in the ocean where sulfide enriched water flows out of the seabed. Uh, the, the diagram on the left shows how hydrothermal fluids are generated at mid-ocean rich settings the downgoing seawater is heated and interact uh, heated and interacts with surrounding basalt as it gets close to the uh, magma chamber underneath, which changes the nature of the fluids significantly. It gets reduced acidic and metal rich, and the hot fluid with lower density uh, ascends towards the sea floor, during which it mixes with alkaline, uh, oxidized, and cold seawater, and the abrupt changes in physical chemical conditions of the fluid induce metal precipitation, metal sulfide precipitation, forming the SMS deposits. They occur not only at middle ocean rich settings, but also Beckerk Basin and Arc Volcanoes. This photo is a cross-cut section of a hydrothermal chimney. They are often highly enriched in base metals such as copper, lead, zinc, as, as well as gold. Given the soaring global um, demands for base metals, particularly copper recent years, um, they are considered to be alternative types of land-based metal um, resources. However, not all of the occurrences can yield valuable metals. And those in EPR and MAR contain mostly iron sulfide. They have no economic value at all. The deposits located in arc-related settings are often economically very promising with high concentrations of copper and gold. And those in the Manus Basin and the Brothers Volcano Comatic Arc are the representative examples. There are two sources for the metals. First, metals are provided from the wall rocks by leaching during water rock interaction. Second, they can also be supplied from magmatic fluid exhaled from a magma chamber underneath. In both cases, copper and gold contents in host rock and the copper, co copper and gold contents in magma in a magma chamber at fluidic solution will be a major factor for the economic SMS deposit. And it has been suggested that the SMS deposits from arc volcano and emerger back arc um, systems have higher metal concentrations and uh, that are mostly ascribed to high magmatic input. The table down here shows the average bulk compositions of the SMS deposits from diverse tectonic settings. As you can see in this diagram, uh, those from arc-related settings contain two to five or 10 
10 times higher zinc, lead, gold, and silver concentrations than those of mid-ocean rich settings. Then how do we measure um, gold and copper concentrations of a magmatic system? The gold and copper contents of igneous rocks, particularly those associated with ore deposits, are often very erratic due to um, hydrothermal alteration. We can use PGE as a proxy for copper and gold, firstly because they are calcophile elements and they behave very similarly with copper and gold during magma differentiation. And their partition coefficients between sulfide melt and silicate melt are even higher than that of copper and gold. And secondly, they are fluid immobile, less mobile during hydrothermal alteration. So the rock composition represent the magmatic compositions. To understand how calcophile element um, behaves during arc magma evolution from basalt to rhyolite, I investigated two submarine lavas, Pure Rich and New Chai, um, because their geochemistry can be simply explained by a closed system fractional crystallization, and they were quite relatively fresh and were not their concentration, copper and gold concentration were not overprinted by later or fluid or mineralization. So if we understand the simple system, we can apply the lesson learned to more complex ore systems. New tile lovers are from a large submarine volcanic, uh, volcanic complex located about 90 kilometers away from Tonga Arc. They are associated with copper and gold rich hydrothermal um, SMS deposits, native sulfur mineralization with 18% copper and up to 2.8% gram per ton of gold was reported. And recent studies on sulfide geochemistry found that the SMS deposits in this region have spatial selective trace element enrichment. For example, the SMS deposits in the center is more enriched in copper, arsenic, antimony, and bismuth compared to those in the northern part that are enriched in um, lead. The authors attribute these variations due to different metal sources. Um, magmatic input played, on, played a more important role in the center, whereas wall rock leaching in the north. Now let's have a look at uh, the magmatic differentiation of new type lavas. They show a wide range of compositional variation from basalt through andesite to dacite. Um, crystallization sequence of olivine CPX and plagioclase in the early stage was followed by magnetite and augite pigeonite um, in the later stage. And the progressive ion depletion um, is a of typical of island dark calcaline magma differentiation trend. More normalized trace element patterns show enriched large ion lithophile elements such as rubidium and barium and high, uh, highly incompatible elements, thorium and uranium, relative to neobium and tantalium, which shows um, trough in the normalized diagram that is um, a typical of island arc lavas. Basalt, basaltic andesite and desite, they all show sub-parallel trace element patterns pointing to their core magmatic origin. The RE patterns of desite can be explained by about 50% of fractionate, fractional crystallization from basaltic andesite. Their trace element compositions vary very continuously from basalt to um, andesite to dacite. Some basalt with high MgO concentrations can be attributed to olivine phenocrystal accumulation. A progressive decrease in scandium concentrations indicate CPX um, becomes a dominant crystallizing phase in, in basaltic andesite. A maximum strontium concentrations at about 3% magnesium oxide concentrations correspond to plagioclase 
played more important role in the later stage of magma differentiation in dacitic and andesitic compositions. An onset of magnetite is thought to be about eight, at, at three percent MGO based on uh, abrupt decrease in vanadium. Now let's have a look calcophile element geochemistry of the new type, more new type lavas, copper, gold, palladium. They all show incompatible behavior in the early stage of magma differentiation, but at about three percent MGO. Um, about two point, below 2.5% of MGO, their concentrations decrease abruptly. The degree of depletion is more significant in palladium compared to copper and gold. We suggest the point where all these um, abrupt decrease in calcophile elements point to the time of sulfide saturation. Note that platinum behaves a bit differently from Palladium, it behaves in, uh, as, a, as a compatible element in the only stage of magma differentiation, although there is abrupt decrease after sulfide saturation. This compatible behavior of platinum in the early stage indicates that platinum alloy, uh, platinum bearing basis crystallization. Palladium copper and palladium gold ratio further support the sulfide saturation at about 2.5% MGO. These ratios remain in, in constant during sulfide under saturated magma differentiation because they both behave incompatibly. But after sulfide saturation, they drop abruptly due to higher partition coefficient of palladium than those of copper and those of gold. This is supported by the presence of copper-rich sulfide blep found in the glassy matrix of the death site. Sulfur solubility in a silicate melt is a function of many parameters such as temperature, pressure, oxygen fugacity, and magma composition. <clears throat> and the sulfide saturation in neotite magmas can be partly attributed to um, increase in SiO2, decrease in ion oxide composition and temperature during magma evolution. But the main trigger might be magnetite crystallization, which result in drop in ion 3 plus ion, total ion ratio in the melt, um, which, which decreases oxygen fugacity in the melt. The lowered oxygen fugacity changes the sulfur species in the silicate melt from soluble sulfate to less soluble sulfide inducing sulfide saturation. In fact, the oxygen ox oxidation state of the basalt ranges from QFM plus one to, to QFM plus 2.5, whereas uh, the oxygen oxidation state of the death site uh, is around QFM plus 0.5. The compatible behavior of platinum in the early stage of magma differentiation can be ascribed to um, crystallization of platinum alloys and, and chromium spinels. There are increasing numbers of reports on platinum alloys in arc-related volcanic rocks and cumulates. These are the BSE photos of platinum alloys in chromium spinels from Amber Peak Right, Vanuatu Arc containing about 85% of uh, platinum and 10% of IPGs. They usually occur in association with chromium spinels in volcanic uh, rocks. And the occurrence of platinum alloys are in harmony uh, with many reports on platinum alloys in accumulated rocks. The most representative example is Green Hills Complex in New Zealand. <clears throat> Um, as you can see in this diagram, plat abundant platinum alloys are found in um, chromium spinels of these rocks. Also, positive, um, positive platinum anomaly of PG patterns of Uralian, Alaskan chromatite um, is another piece of evidence supporting platinum alloy crystallization in primitive arc systems. <clears throat> um, it appears that platinum alloy crystallization is a unique feature of arc magmas. Here I plotted PGE 
um, data of sulfide, primitive sulfide under saturated magmas from continental flood basalt, OIB, and commodiate. They all show wide variation in platinum iridium ratios due to um, iridium rich alloy crystallization, which does not fractionate palladium from platinum. In contrast, arc related uh, lavas such as pure rich and new tie. They show both increase in palladium iridium ratio and palladium uh, platinum iridium ratio and palladium platinum ratio, indicating platinum alloy crystallization. So, why do we have platinum alloy crystallization in arc magmas, whereas iridium alloy uh, is, is predominant in other systems? Um, two of the least soluble PGs. Uh, PG is our platinum and iridium in a silicate melt. So if a uh, mantle dried magma is saturated with PGE alloys, then it should be either platinum or iridium. But as you can see in this diagram, the diagram on the right shows sulfur undersaturated primitive magmas uh, from diverse settings, YB, Comatiite, and arc related settings. And the arc related setting, the magmas from there, are, are uh, characterized by very fractionated PG patterns with very depleted iridium concentrations compared to OIB and commodiate, whereas their platinum um, concentrations are quite compatible. Also, the arc magmas, uh, the temperature of arc magma are lower than that of OIB and commodiate, which result in um, lowering of platinum alloy solubility in a silicate melt. Um, in, a, in addition, um, oxidized nature of arc magma, delayed sulfide saturation, and then um, uh, facilitate pre uh, platinum alloy crystallization. Let's move on to the pure rich lavas. The samples were collected from eastern Mars Basin, east of P PNG, and north of New Britain Arc. They are associated with famous pac minus gold rich hydrothermal fields, which is a potential exploration target of Nautilus minerals. The indicated mineral resources here are about 870 kiloton at 6.8% copper and up to uh, 57 ppm of gold. Their calcophile element geochemistry is quite similar to that of neutrite lavas. Copper and gold behaves incompatibly in the early stage of magma differentiation, but behaves compatibly in the later stage with more depletion in palladium, indicating that sulfide saturation occurs at around 3% MGO. Palladium and um, rhodium, one of the IPGs, um, show compatible behavior from the early stage of magma differentiation, uh, but there is a, a different rate of decrease in terms of platinum and rhodium after sulfide saturation. So the only compatible behavior of platinum and rhodium can be explained by platinum alloy crystallization or chromium spinel crystallization. Uh, the important thing is because of the difference of behavior between palladium and platinum, palladium platinum ratio provides very useful information Sulfide under saturated magma uh, differentiation with platinum alloy crystallization will lead to increase in palladium platinum ratio. But after sulfide saturation, this ratio decreases, probably due to higher affinity of palladium with, um, with sulfide melt than platinum. Therefore, palladium platinum ratio of magma represent the amount of fractional crystallization before sulfide saturation. So the higher the ratio, the later the sulfide saturation, and the higher gold, copper, or potential. To sum up the lessons learned from the two arc lavas, IPG and platinum are hosted by chromium spinel and platinum alloys, whereas palladium is solely controlled by sulfide. Therefore, palladium content and palladium platinum ratio are good proxies for copper and gold contents in arc magmas, um, which I will call it calcophile element fertility. And the 
uh, the two systems, submarine magmas associated with gold and copper rich SMS deposit show late sulfide saturation. Late sulfide saturation is important in terms of in, uh, the, the formation of magmatic hydrothermal deposits because it results in the accumulation of copper and gold until the timing of volatile exsolution, which is generally um, gen which generally occurs at around dacite and andesitic composition. The copper concentration at the time of volatile solution is around 150 to 200 ppm for new tie, 60 to 230 ppm for pure rich. This trend are distinct from that of the Honshu arc lavas which shows progressive de copper decrease from the early stage of magma differentiation, suggesting early sulfide saturation. The copper concentration at, at the time of fluidic solution are relatively lower than new tie and pure rich. This might be one of the reasons why there is no large um, magmatic hydrothermal copper gold deposits in the Honshu arc. Note that they had similar initial copper concentrations, but different magma differentiation process, particularly in terms of timing of sulfide saturation, which result in one being copper, gold, or bearing, the other barren. Also, recently, Mongol et al. suggested that if volatile saturation occurs during silica, uh, sulfide undersaturated magma differentiation, the dissolved volatile phases tends to attach to sulfide melt, forming gas melt compound with a lower density than surrounding silicate melt. During the ascent of this compound, the sulfide melt will be redissolved, and the metals held in the sulfide melt can be transferred to volatile phases. This is an efficient process to concentrate and transfer metals from metals and sulfur. To, uh, to magmatic volatile phases. And this process is more likely to occur in a magma saturated with sulfide in the later stage. So the relative timing of volatile and sulfide saturation plays an important role in the formation of magmatic hydrothermal deposits. Before we discuss the calcophyllum and fertility of magmas associated with the SMS deposits, let's have a look at the result of pottery systems. If calcophile element fertility, the calcophile metals, gold and copper um, contents in a, in a silicate melt at fluid exsolution is the major factor in, in, the forming, in the formation of magmatic hydrothermal deposits, then there should be systematic differences in calcophile element fertility, which can be uh, induced from PGE um, concentrations, between the copper ore bearing igneous rocks and copper barren rocks. To test this hypothesis, co workers at ANU and myself in investigated PG geochemistry of igneous rocks associated with giant sized porphyry copper gold, which includes Cadia, North Parks, Grassberg, and copper deposits, including Elabra, Chukikamata. Also, we uh, investigated the barren systems such as rotite um, volcanic systems in Ar Argentina and Sanyo Volcanomanite series and Sanyo Magnetite series in Japan. And the Bingham data uh, reported in the literature will be discussed together. The palladium contents of property copper gold suits are generally um, higher than 3 ppb and remains very enriched until the late stage of magma um, differentiation. Primitive arc lava compositions are shown in black circles here. The timing of sulfide saturation can be constrained by a decrease in palladium contents, the timing of volatile saturation by magnesium concentrations of intrusions associated with the main mineralization stage. The North, the North Park suites, shown in orange symbols here, experienced very late sulfide saturation at about 1% MGO, which is overlapped by fluid saturation. Cadia suite is saturated with sulfide 
um, relatively early at about 6% MGO, but the palladium depletion is quite limited, probably due to a small fraction of sulfide melt segregated, so that it could keep its calcophile element concentrations in a magma until volatile saturation at about 2 to 3% MGO. Palladium concentration of poppy copper sweets are consistently lower than that of poppy copper gold systems at the same range of um, magma differentiation MGO concentrations. Abrupt decrease in palladium concentration um, shown in the Alabra samples in yellow suggest that sulfide saturation uh, took place at about 2.5% MGO moderately before the onset of fluid exsolution volatile saturation at 1.1 uh, to 1.5 weight percent. They have lost, um, they, they should have lost a budget of a part of calcophile elements at depths. The baron systems are substantially depleted in palladium compared with all bearing suits, even in the least evolved rocks. This suggests that they are they have lost most of their calcophile element budget by sulfide segregation at depths, or they may have originated from a, a calcophile element poor source. The moderate depletion uh, of pallad palladium concentrations in rathite suite can be ascribed to mixing between basaltic magma and PG for felsic melt. This diagram compares calcophile element fertility of all the studied suites. Palladium magnesium oxide ratio, palladium platinum ratios are used for the fertility indicators. Note that the samples uh, with less than 2.5 mag magnesium concentrations are plotted on this diagram. Um, because we, uh, because it, 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 it might be the most representative of the magma compositions at the time of fluid saturation. Uh, in this diagram, most of the copper gold seeds have high palladium platinum ratios, higher than those of primitive arc magmas, suggesting that they may have, they, they have experienced prolonged sulfide, sulfide under saturated uh, fractionation with platinum alloy crystallization. Uh, they are highly fertile. The fertility uh, is about 10 times lower for the poppy copper suites. The barren suites are mostly uh, distinguished from all bearing suites by their lower fertility. This result confirmed that Calcophile and fertility is clearly one of the major factors to form poppy deposits. But note that um, the calcophile and fertility is just one of the major factors, not all. The seminal study of Klein and Bodnar argued that the intrusion volume and the duration of magma activity are the first order factors controlling the metal endowment of poppy systems. Also, recent studies of um, Tilly Mitchell suggested any normal hydrous arc magmas have potential to produce fluid capable of forming property copper deposits. But two of the critical factors that control the economics of a property system are its size and grade. The former is locally, uh, logically controlled by the size and the, the, the size of the magma event associated with the hydrothermal mineralization. And I suggest the latter by a combination of calcophile element fertility and efficient transfer of metal from the melt to the fluid. It seems that calcophile element fertility appears to be particularly controlling the gold, gold grade of the poppy deposit. This diagram shows that Gold grade of poppy ores are positively correlated with palladium concentration at the time of fluid saturation, as it's de determined from palladium content of the ore associated poppies. This observation suggests that the gold grade of the studied deposit is controlled by the gold content of the magma at fluid saturation.
So I suggest the gold contents and gold copper ratios can be mainly controlled by the timing of sulfide saturation relative to fluid saturation. Here I will show you two models. Model one assumes sulfide saturation at around 30% fractionation with an assumed sulfide melt fraction of 0.2. If, if fluid saturation occurs at around 70% fractionation, the ore forming fluid will be significantly depleted in gold, but contains moderate copper, resulting in low-grade copper copper deposits with low gold copper ratios. Model two assumes that sulfide saturation at 70% of fractionation, this magma accumulated gold and copper at the time of fluid saturation at 70% fractionation, liberating gold-rich ore fluid resulting in copper gold for pre deposits. The diagram here shows uh, copper and gold grades of the uh, 37 largest known for pre copper and copper gold deposits. The size of the bubbles represent um, the tonnage of the deposit. The, for the copper deposit, copper and gold grades are positively correlated regardless of the tonnage of the each deposit, suggesting that the duration and the volume of magma activity are not the primary controls of the ore grade, particularly gold grade. Note that the gold grade, uh, copper grade decreased from 1.2 to 0.3 weight percent, which is quite narrow range, but gold grade shows almost two orders of magnitude depletion from 0.4 to 0.002 gram per ton. Previous studies suggest that the variation of gold copper ratios of the property ores can be attributed to fluidic solution, fluid composition, and emplacement depths. However, I suggest that this trend can also be simply explained by variations in calcophile element fertility of ore associated magmas due to differences in interval between sulfide and fluid saturation in each deposit. To test this hypothesis, I calculated the copper and gold grades of the ores precipitated from the fluid in equilibrium with the melt compositions expected predicted by model number two, assuming initial copper and gold contents of 50 uh, ppm and 4 ppb respectively, um, if fluid saturation occurs before or close to the sulfide saturation, as you can see in this model, the ores um, have high gold copper ratios. But as the interval increases, gold grade suddenly drops. And if the interval is larger than 10% fractionation, then the ores are copper only with very low gold copper ratios. The model accounts for large variations in gold grade of property deposits, suggesting that the relative timing of fluid and sulfide saturation controls the gold grade of the property deposits. The use of calcophyllum and fertility scheme for the SMS deposit should be done with care because the metals are not only sourced from magmatic fluid, but also from um, wall rock leaching. In addition, the metal enrichment processes are different from those in property systems. However, the late sulfide saturation of associated magmas, the associated magmas will enhance the ore potential regardless of the metal sources because it will result in highly fertile ore forming fluid by the formation of gold and copper rich host rocks and evolved magmas in the shallow magma chamber. There is an increasing number of reports on magmatic sulfide flaps in submarine lavas, which indicates that the magmas were sulfide saturated just before the eruption. The copper-rich sulfide flap in a glassy matrix of the death site neotite lavas contain 460 ppb of palladium and 12 ppm of gold. This basis can be a significant source for gold during water rock interaction. 
Some magmatic sulfides are closely associated with gas bubbles. They are partly dissolved by interaction uh, with gas um, gas bubbles, indicating that some part, uh, some portions of the metals held in the sulfide may have incorporated into magmatic fluid. The calcophile and volatility of pure rich and neotite lavas, which are associated with gold rich SMS deposits, are plotted in the fertility diagram used for the property deposits. The high and palladium magnesium ratio and palladium platinum ratios indicate that they contain as much calcophile elements as those associated with uh, poppy gold uh, copper systems. In contrast, the calcophile and fertility of the Jaguar Bentley copper zinc VMS deposit is relatively low, plotting in the field of copper only or barren. We, we know that. Um, uh, there are just three cases, but despite the, the limited number of case studies, the correlation between the calcophile element fertility and the type gold rich versus gold poor suggests that magma composition modulated by the timing of sulfide saturation may play an important role in the formation of SMS deposits as well. And um, the calcophile element fertility may also account for the systematic differences in gold grade of SMS deposits between arc-related settings and MOP settings. Sulfur solubility in a silicate melt is mainly controlled by oxygen trigastine in the upper crust. Being relatively oxidized, the I, um, island arc basalt is likely to experience late sulfide saturation, which results in higher calcophile element fertility of the magma in a shallow magma chamber, forming gold-rich hot rocks or, or gold-rich ore fluids. In contrast, relatively reduced MORP would experience only sulfide saturation and a large amount of gold should be held in the lower crust, resulting in calcophile element depleted, gold depleted upper crust, which leads to gold poor SMS deposit. This diagram shows the differences between uh, differences in palladium behavior between ore associated arc uh, magmas and mid ocean rich. The arc magmas are characterized by high palladium contents in a wide range of magma evolution, whereas the palladium contents in morphs decrease abruptly in the early stage of magma differentiation due to early sulfide saturation. So I suggest a combination of calcophile element fertility and the higher magmatic contribution, magmatic input due to higher water concentrations in arc magmas mainly account for the higher gold contents in the SMS deposits in island arc settings. Let me sum up uh, my talk. Palladium contents and palladium platinum um, ratio represent the calcophile uh, element fertility of arc magmas. And calcophile element budgets of barren rocks are significantly lower than those of magmas associated with copper gold mineralization. Calcophile and fertility is one of the key factors in forming property deposits, particularly gold grade. Whether it works similarly to the SMS deposits or not should be investigated in the future. Later sulfide saturation and short intervals between fluid and sulfide saturation favor to form fertile magmas and increase the ore potential. Thank you.